Hi, this is my uh, little introduction to uh, this series of videos. Um, about a year ago, I installed this uh, Wham Bam Handy Andy 4.5 foot uh, no dig aluminum uh, fence system in my backyard. And uh, just recently, uh, I'm always behind on stuff, I started going through the, the videos that I made while I was doing the installation uh, where I was trying to explain things so that someone could potentially look them up on YouTube if they were having trouble. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of those videos have really bad audio. Um, yeah, mostly just really bad audio. They have wind sounds, they have cars driving by, a bunch of other stuff. And unfortunately, I can't shoot those videos again because I don't feel like tearing down the fence behind me. Uh, so this is just my introduction. Uh, if you really need this information, then yeah, you can slug through these videos um, and uh, try to find it, try to see if you can figure out how to do exactly what you want to do. Uh, but unfortunately, they aren't the best quality. You're welcome to complain. You can complain in the comments down at the bottom. Uh, this is the internet, go for it. Uh, but I mean, I'm aware of the issues and I apologize. Uh, but if you do need some of this information and you find these useful, uh, that's why they're here. And uh, I hope someone gets something out of this. I just wanted to do a demonstration showing driving one of the posts in the ground with the gas powered post counter. I'm just going to speed it up after I start. I'm going to show this timer uh, so I can say exactly how long it takes. But really, you start the post, you use a level to make sure that you're driving in straight after you get in a couple inches. And it's really wobbly at first. You drive it down a little bit more, you're able to measure, measure the level again. Every time you drive it down a little bit more until you get about here. At that point, you really can't adjust it any, anymore. Then you just drive it home to 36 inches above the ground. So, I mean, the, the biggest part of all this with the gas power post pounder is actually checking the level. It takes longer to do that than pounding to the ground. But if you're using one of the overhead post pounders, it's going to be taking a lot longer for that. So, you know, I, I like the gas powered post pounder. I've never used one before, but I can definitely tell that it saved a lot of time and a lot of wear and tear in my body. So, I'd recommend it. Two minutes, 45 seconds. So really, like I said, the most tedious part is getting the level. If you really mess up on the level, technically you should pull the post, but there's a leveling donut that goes in the top, so if you're just slightly off level, it's not a problem. And like I said, when you get all the way to the end, when you get about this much post sticking out of there, there's not a lot you can do to change the level of the post by pulling on it. The post pounder is pretty heavy. I actually have bruises on both of my shoulders who throwing it on my shoulders and then keeping it there while I'm getting stuff in position. And I am a little on the short side, so I have to use a ladder to get on top of that stuff and some post to begin with. But otherwise, it's definitely been a blessing. I mean, I've dug back here before, there's a lot of little rocks, and that post pounder drives right away. Now, I'm just about done with the prep work on this project for making this, getting this fence up. Uh, and I just wanted to go over a little bit on the layout. So originally I wasn't really sure what I was doing. Uh, I was following the instructions, but I wasn't sure in my head what correlated to uh, what kind of outcome on the instructions. Uh, so now that I'm almost done, I can kind of explain it. So the big thing was the spacing between the posts. Um, the instructions say to basically lay out all the, the posts first before you do anything else but I didn't trust that. I was afraid that one post was going to be a quarter inch off, the next post was going to be a half inch off, the third post was going to be three quarters of an inch off, and by then I wouldn't be able to connect fence posts, and then, you know, the, the errors would just propagate from there. But the instructions basically tell you to take a rail from the fence, so if you buy pre-assembled panels, you won't have one, but if you buy an individual panel, it'll come with all the individual parts, and a rail is the easiest thing to work with, because this is the length of the fence. Um, and then you take one of the base plates. Now, the base plates actually have the word rail written on them, um, and they're, they're separated by 90 degrees. So basically you take a base plate and then you stick it in the ground uh, where you want to start. So like right there, and then you take the rail, and you basically take the rail and you touch it on this bottom section, uh, and then you run it basically along whatever line you're doing, if you're doing a string line. In this case, uh, I actually had painted everything. I did a, a white paint line all the way down. 
So you just run this right along the white paint line to the next point, and then you lift up the end, and then you put another one of these base plates down there, and then you just all the way down. Um, it's it's actually really sweet, uh, and the cool thing is there's a lot of play in the panels. Uh, the way they're cut, you can see here this notch is actually pretty wide. So if you, you do it precisely, uh, the panels are kind of a snug fit. Uh, you can give a little bit more if you, you need to. Uh, you know, a quarter inch, a half an inch can usually make up for it. Uh, sometimes though the panels were a little bit too snug and I had to take a hacksaw and shave off a quarter inch or so of them. But anyway, the, the first step is basically to just go around and lay out all of your posts. And then you can kind of come back and you can split the difference and try to figure out if you want to do two shorter sections of fence at the beginning and end. If you've got a partial or if you want to do something else where you take off, you know, a section of railing on every section of the fence. But before I filled all this in, I just wanted to show this because right now, once I cover these with the post, you won't be able to see them. Um, another thing is, so I brought everything in line uh, by running a string, but there's also a line on here that says string line. Uh, the string line is useful if you have a yard that is flat, not necessarily level, but basically on the same plane. So if there's a consistent slope or whatever, you can use the string line on here. But in my case, my yard, und yard undulates. Uh, so the string line wasn't very useful uh, for that. I buried everything down uh, one inch below the soil and then put all my posts up on top and then I just ran from there. Um, and I'm going to do a, a separate thing on that, whether to use uh, the racking mechanism or to do something else because uh, it did get a little janky on me. But it's a pretty sweet uh, system and it actually worked out pretty well. So this is uh, the handy Andy uh, 4.5 foot uh, panel fence, uh, aluminum panel from uh, Wham Bam. Uh, I'm just going to go over installing one of the posts, well aside from the obvious. So I rented the gas powered post pounder, uh, put this post in line, put all these posts in line kind of at the same time. And they have this footing that goes in place which is actually really handy for spacing everything out. Anyway, I'm going to go through the specifics that need to be done once the post is actually sunk in the ground. So I'm just going to speed up here. The first thing you do is you take this, kind of pull it up, and the top's all mushroomed where uh, you've used the post pounder on it. So it locks it in place, keeps it up out of your way. Then I use a shovel, and you take it and you kind of dig down. And then you take the grass and you just fold it away uh, from the base of this thing. Because it all has to go back anyway. Uh, so that way you're not trying to pick up clumps of grass. Uh, and try to like jigsaw it all back together. So if you can just grab it and fold it away, that makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner when you're trying to make it look nice after the fact. So they have a little warning uh, that if you live in a northern area, uh, which I'm in Wisconsin, so I'm north enough, uh, to put three inches of space beneath the bottom of uh, this, uh, this ring here. So that's supposedly to give it area to heave if there's frost. So you have to dig down a little bit further. The, the actual spines on here are a little bit over two inches. Um, so you have to dig down at least to the depth of the spine. And then, of course, if you want the fence to look like it's in the ground instead of floating on these orange rings, you need to go another inch down. Um, so four inches. So this is just best with a hand shovel. Originally I was wondering if I should do, be doing it with like a post hole digger, you know, kind of defeat the purpose, but hit it with the post hole digger a couple times before I sunk the post. The hand shovel goes fast enough. Amusingly enough, when you're all done with this, when you put everything back in place, uh, you just take the dirt and you jam it back in there and obviously it's going to start filling up this void space. I'm guessing so long as it's a loose packed soil, it's going to cancel out the heave from the frost. But I did contact Wham Bam because that really wasn't specified in the instructions. So it looks like this hole is just about deep enough. I'll take this and just get up and down. And it's plenty deep enough. And then what I do is I take uh, basically just any kind of flat piece of anything laying around. So I'll use this level and uh, use that to make a flat area over the top, which is basically my ground level. So if you look at this, this lower ring here is what the cover for the post sits on. So if I take this post and I put it over the top, it sits on that lower ring. 
this upper ring's kind of like, uh, I guess, to shimmy it, to, to keep it from moving around too much. But this is just under an inch. So I've been taking my flat piece of uh, board or whatever and using that and pulling this part up to the bottom of that to assume that's my ground level. So this is the area that's going to be backfilled with dirt. So you take that, you pull it up where you want it, and then you use an eighth inch drill bit. So I've ran through a lot of drill bits because this is pretty heavy duty pipe. Uh, this is galvanized uh, steel and they did not spare on it too much. So you take an eighth inch drill bit and drill your pot hole. And then they have a ton of screws. Different panels came with different screws. Uh, they have these nice little hex head screws that go in pretty nice. Um, they've also given me uh, regular uh, self-tapping uh, stainless steel screws for some of this, but those, the, the heads seem to strip uh, shear off them. So it's not in the instructions, but this is a 932nd driver here. The instructions say to have, a, I think this is a, yeah, a 516th on hand, but the 516th only drives the big hex heads. It doesn't drive the little hex heads. So you got to have that on hand. Take that, drive it in. Okay. Now the next thing, this is their, their leveling ring. Um, basically I, I take a little float and I put throw it on here and I see which of the directions is most off level. So it's a little off level and it wants to go that way. Um, but this way, that's pretty close to level. Uh, so I'm going to take this leveling donut and put it so that it works in that direction, side to side. Um, this little bit of off-levelness here can actually be taken out when you connect the different fence sections. So when you connect the next fence section, you can take the post and just push it that ever so slight bit. So once I figure out which direction I want to put this, you put it over the top. And I've had one so that was mushroomed so bad where this didn't fit, but for the most part it fits with a little bit of twisting and pulling. So once that's over the top, you take your four foot level, drop it in, and you put it over that uh, the ring that the post is going to sit over, and then this, because this is also what the post is going to sit over. And then you just drive that and you put that where you want it to be for level. And then again, another eighth inch pilot hole. So I had a lot of luck uh, just using two different uh, drivers here. So I have an older uh, uh, DeWalt that I'm using for driving the screws, and I've also got my regular DeWalt for drilling the holes, and that works a little bit to save me some time instead of switching back and forth. So once you've got that in place, then that's going to level out the center of your post and then this one is for the bottom. And you take your post and you put it over it. Make sure it goes all the way down. Then I just eyeball it and try to keep it in line with the other posts. Then you have to lock the post to the, the outer post, the cover, to the other post. So way down at the bottom here, that uh, ring that it's sitting over, you want to drill through the bottom part of this post and through that ring and then through the galvanized pipe. Now it takes a little bit of doing. Um, if you try to do it all at once, you can shoot yourself in the foot. So what I usually do is I'll take it and I'll put a little mark on it where I want to drill it. And so I don't get any wander. I pick it up and I try to put it level. Because unless you're fit sharp, you end up with a little bit of wander on a lot of these things. And, you know, the, the way this system is designed, it covers a lot of that up. But if I can avoid it, I do. You know, once I get it down, I level it, and I kind of make it look flat again. And then I drive through, down through the plastic. And then I pull this up again. So lately I've been taking this level, pulling it up, and putting it there to keep it out of the way so it doesn't slide down. So the problem that I was having is that when I was going through this aluminum plus this plastic, I get wander. Um, like I said, I've gone through a lot of drill bits trying to avoid that. But then you start boring out that uh, 
the aluminum and then you start just tearing into the plastic. So I do go into it with uh, the drill bit while everything's kind of separate like this and then I put it back down. Um, there was one or two attempts where I, I kind of messed up the plastic and didn't make it look good. And in that case I just rotated this 90 degrees and tried from the other side. So once you've got that pallet hole drilled, this takes the larger hex nuts. So you have to swap out your drill bit. And then before I go through everything all at the same time, I take the longer hex nut and I just go through the plastic and into the, the actual pipe. So in this case, it didn't happen. It actually hit the pipe and then went off to the side rather than going into it. So just back it out and try again. And it didn't work again. So usually if it doesn't work two times in a row, I'm assuming the self-tapping thing has kind of closed off that hole. So then I go on with the drill bit again. And then second time is usually the charm. So that time it did go all the way in. So back it out. Move this out of the way. Blow off some of that dust. And then even though that's all done what I hoped it would do, sometimes this also wanders again when you put it in there. When that happens, it bulges out the aluminum towards you. So don't try to push it. If you see the aluminum bulging out, just give it a little bit more. And if it keeps going, then back it off and try to clear that hole out again. So in this case that didn't happen, it went in, it locked in. So you can actually give this a little bit of a twist. Uh, in this case, it, it, the, the whole pipe twisted when that happened. But you give it a little bit of a twist and you can kind of uh, fix anything that happens that way. Once everything's locked in, that's kind of the way this pipe is. Uh, the only other thing that has to be done, drilling the holes for hanging the fence and also putting a cap on it. So I'm going to make this short video on attaching the fence panels to the lamp and fence. One, one of the, the issues that I've run into uh, throughout my yard is that it is not flat. Uh, I've got a lot of waviness to it. Uh, really the sides slope down, but then along the back fence line where you'd expect it to be flat, there's a lot of undulation. So really the learning curve in all this was trying to figure out how to make it look good. Um, if you read the manual, it says, you know, the fence panels are rackable, which is really cool. You can kind of slide them side to side to help them look like they're straight up and down. Um, but if you just try to rack every panel, some of the panels are going to go up and some of the panels might go down. And when you do that, you end up with these posts where you've got basically a V, an inverted or an actual V, and it just, it looks terrible. Uh, so basically what I ended up resorting to is before every panel goes in place, I do a dry fit and I see if it makes sense to put it actually level, flat, um, at it like, you know, 180 degrees or whatever you want to call it, or if it makes sense to rack that panel. So I try to make them level when I can, uh, but I'll rack them when I need to, and I try to rack them all in the same direction so it gives it like a consistent shape. So I've taken this panel, and this is actually the last panel that I need to put up, so yay. Uh, and I put it in place, and I've got it kind of propped up with uh, some 2x4s to put it to the height that I want. I usually try to make sure that one side is uh, going to be attached similar in height to the other side. Uh, that helps kind of bring it together. Um, if I can't do that, then I make sure that they're just, just uh, I make sure that it's off enough so that it doesn't look like it's unintentional. So I, I basically line this up with this side, lined it up with this side, and then this fence panel's racked, so you take the, the level and you put it on one of the, the actual rods in the middle, and then you adjust basically to get this at 90 degrees to the ground. Um, and then that's what you go with. If you're trying to make the, the fence panels uh, all level, then you obviously check the level up here, but that's not what I'm going with in this case. So I've done a dry fit to see basically that it'll work fine connecting over here, and then I'm going to drill these holes over here, 
Once the holes are drilled over here, I'll take the fence panel and I'll lock it in place. Then I'll get this side where I want it, and then I'll use a jig that I made. So I made this on like my third panel. Uh, I just cut a piece of wood, cut a piece of uh, cardboard from one of the wham bam boxes, and uh, decided to put in the three holes that need to be drilled. So if you read the instruction manual, the instruction manual says to drill the first hole two inches above the ground, drill the next hole 30, 46 inches above that, and drill the next hole seven inches above that. And it's all from the bottom of each of these brackets. That got really cumbersome really quick, so I made this. I intended to make this one piece of uh, cardboard, make sure that it worked for my purpose, and then take a piece of wood. Uh, it's just been working fine for me. I do have a lot of uh, wander in this bottom hole here. I know where to put the drill bit now, but I'm sure if this sat around for two weeks, I'd have no clue and it'd be useless to me. So after I get the holes done, uh, throw the bolts in it. And then one of the, the last things that you can adjust that really isn't in the manual is uh, the, the straightness of this post and the straightness of that post. Well, that post is kind of locked in because it hooked everything else, but this post you can bring in or push out a little bit if it's slightly off of uh, where, where you want it. And especially here, this opening is going to be a gate. I need to make sure that's right. So real quick before I do this, I'm just going to go through the yard and show you kind of examples of what I'm talking about. So you can see over here, I was trying to make these posts over here. I was trying to make the, the back part of the fence level. And then over here, you can see it starts to step down. Um, while keeping everything level. I had one major mistake right in the beginning, which kind of showed me what this problem looks like. So if you see this post right here, you can see that this side kind of comes up and the other side comes up. That is after it was corrected. So when it was first put in, you can see down there that it's about level with the ground almost. But when I first put this in, each of those was up uh, even more maybe another half inch to an inch and that was really pronounced and that was basically when I had to stop and say hey this looks ugly uh, I'm doing something wrong so this back fence panel is mostly just level and then I, I've stepped it down uh, over here on this side panel you can see that I've got heavy racking over here and then a little bit of racking and then level the gates level and then a little bit more racking so this because it's a slope I kind of went down uh, from top to bottom over here, it's kind of turning into something similar, but less pronounced. You can see there's, I've got some racking over here, and then a level panel there, and then some major racking there. So really, the, the key in all this is what looks good. Because um, if you just follow the manual, if you just try to do one thing consistently, I guess if you just try to make every panel level and just kind of step them, it's not going to look too bad. But if you try to rack it, that can really get away from you. So I'm just going to pull this down. Um, and really, all I do is... Uh, close enough, I line up the holes that I'm going to drill on this side with the brackets on the other side. So I just give it a quick look. And because, you know, a lot of this is kind of idiot proof, there's a lot of slack, a lot of play in the fitting, so you can adjust a lot of things up and down. So as long as you get it close enough, it's not too bad. Um, I know I've said it in the other video too, but if you run through a lot of drill bits, run, running the drill through this aluminum isn't too bad, but there is uh, that metal rod in the middle, so if you're drilling into that a lot, it's going to wear out your bit really quick. This is bit number seven. Uh, thankfully, I'm almost done. So some of the, the kits, each one of these panels comes with a little kit in it, uh, that has your screws and your bolts and everything. Some of the panel kits came with uh, like a hex nut and some of them came with a screw. Um, and, and it kind of threw me at first because I didn't realize where the screws were coming from. I thought everything was supposed to be hex nuts. I didn't realize which packs I was opening when I was getting screws. Uh, the hex nuts are superior to the screws. I've, uh, I've sheared off a couple of the, the actual screw head ones. mentioned in the manual. The manual calls for the larger hex bit, which you use for uh, some of the other parts, but not for these. 
and you got to be careful with these. You can strip them. So right now I, I ran that one in a little bit too far, so I need to make sure I uh, set the clutch on this thing. So it, So if you do drill these wrong, and you don't like the position of them, um, there's a whole area that's behind this, uh, this what is that, bracket here. Uh, so you can move that bracket up a half inch or down a half inch, and whatever old hole you had there is going to be covered up uh, by the bracket itself. So there's, a, there's some more clutch factor kind of built into it that way. I mean, you don't want a lot of open holes near fence, but... Now I'm going to come over to the other side. One of the key tools is uh, one of these metallic uh, markers. So it's right on the, the powder coating, I use the metallic marker so I can keep an eye on it. So we'll just move this over here. One drill, once that one pilot hole is in place,
purpose was that this bottom hole was two inches from the ground. And I would put that on the ground and then I would burn everything up to the top and that's where I would burn it down. But like I said, I had these issues with the yard being level and not being level. And if you just run too much off the ground, it would be a different story. Because when you throw your line, you can get all your uh, footings in place uh, at the correct level. And then you could just kind of throw up the fence. But going in this route, has caused a lot of problems. So once the uh, holes are in place, it's a repeat of what was done before. Three brackets, three screws. And this is, again, why it's gonna have to be You have to change your bit. Sometimes when you're prefitting things, you realize uh, when uh, the rod is too long, That's all in place. Now is the time to double check everything. So check this. Here I'm going to talk about the, the gate uh, for the Handy Andy aluminum fence. Um, basically the gate comes with some interesting features. So when you're laying out the fence, you use a piece of railing to determine the distance between everything. But when you get to the fence, there's actually a jig that comes with it. There's this aluminum jig that comes with it. Uh, and the post positioners, uh, basically you'd come up to it using your railing to get the, the distance. And then the next post positioner in line goes right into it and locks in place like that. 
and then the next one in line after that's right here. So if you're doing a 48 inch wide gate, this basically automatically determines the distance for everything. Um, if you're wanting to cut it down, then that's on you to figure out the distance, that, the amount that you have to cut out of it. And also you're going to have to replace the gate uh, with a 4x4 uh, wooden post that you have to drill the holes into. So anyway, underneath the gate jig though is actually this metal post stabilizer, which is this heavy duty uh, piece of metal like this. And this prevents a uh, wobble side to side for the, the side of the gate that's actually going to have the gate connected to it, so the, the hinge side. And so it's basically a sandwich of this with the jig on top of that, with the post stable, with the post positioner on top of that. And the big note here is that these actually lock in in a certain orientation. So if you put this uh, post positioner uh, stabilizer in the wrong orientation, then you got to pull it back out again. And I found the best way to do that is to get a hammer underneath this edge and kind of just bring back on it. So anyway, you come in with the regular uh, your, your regular setup. You drop one of the posts in like you normally would uh, with the positioner, and then you got the, the stabilizer, you've got the, the jig, all this other good stuff, and that's all buried under the ground. So when I got my instructions, I came with the panel. The panel, the instructions said to bury this uh, jig five and a half inches underground, and I did that. But when I looked online to trigger, figure out some more details, unfortunately online it said to bury it two and a half inches underground. And when I contacted them, they said that my instructions were wrong and I should have buried it two and a half. But I left it for this gate five and a half because I already stuck at that. Uh, in addition to uh, the, the jig and the stabilizer, uh, the gate comes with a set of these uh, spring hinges. And they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty strong. I mean, this, this gate's on a little bit of an angle. They definitely close well. So unfortunately, at one point I lost one of these hinges and I had to go online. And uh, replacement aluminum hinges, they would have sent me one, but uh, it looks like these are about 50 bucks for the pair if you try to find them on Amazon. You know, one of the panels on this thing is $109, but the gate setup's like $349, $399, something like that. Uh, it really doesn't seem like you get that kind of value out of it. I mean, what's this stabilizer cost? So they're, they're definitely making a good chunk of money uh, on these gates. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, the big thing was, when I ran this one, I ran it the standard size, but I also have a double gate over there, and I have another gate that I installed up on the concrete. The concrete one's also standard size, but I had to make sure that everything was kind of level before I got to it. So, this post here is a little firmed up uh, from that stabilizer, but not a ton. Um, you're not supposed to run this fence off of an unsupported post. So if this were just a free-floating post, you're not supposed to do that. I did talk to them about it. They said that you could uh, concrete this post if you wanted to, if it was a freestanding post. But they just said, don't run it off a freestanding post. So basically, uh, connecting it to the rest of this fence down there, that's taking up some of the, the, the strain, the, the leverage uh, right here. So that's a basically what there is to the gate system. Uh, I had a couple problems with the, the double gate, so we'll, we'll walk over to the double gate, uh, which is over here. And uh, really the problem that I have with this is you cut uh, a 4x4 four four post to the length that it needs to be for this bottom area, and then you drive the anchors down into it, and then each side uh, has a metal post stabilizer underneath the 4x4. Four so the problem is if you don't drive, drill through the 4x4 four four post perfectly square uh, to the post, so at a 90 degree, perfectly perpendicular to the post, then when you try to drive your actual metal post through it, it's going to force them to come in at an angle. And when that happened to me, one of the posts came out at an angle and then it wasn't going through the, the stabilizer. So I actually ended up cutting a little notch out of the stabilizer to get it to work. Uh, I mean, there, there, was, there was some rigmarole in terms of getting everything to properly align, but once that was done, uh, I ended up taking up a little bit of slack at the top and the bottom uh, on each side of the fence to make sure that this uh, gap in between the two sections of the fence was uh, basically even all the way top to bottom. There's also a drop bar, uh, you can see it down here, uh, that they sell, it's like 20 bucks, and you use that for a double gate. Now, as you saw when I closed a gate back there, unfortunately, even with the stabilizer, there, there's definitely a lot of wiggle wobble in this thing, which is a little unfortunate. 
but they do uh, seem to close well on their own. Um, I have one up here, this one up here, I just finished installing this one today. Uh, this one is on concrete, this kind of finished up the project. Um, this one, uh, the posts that are on the concrete are definitely sturdier. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, but there, there, since obviously there's no jig here, there's a little bit more in terms of trying to finesse the thing and make sure that all your gaps are the right distance at the end of things. Um, but that's basically all there is to the fence, except for uh, one thing I wanted to point out. So each of these uh, um, hinges here take four screws on the face on each side, but then on the inside, there's another four screws on each face. So there's 16 screws per hinge. And they're not the short screws, they're the long screws. And this screw will hit the screw that's coming in from this side. This screw will hit the screw that's coming from this side. So there's four problem screws on each of these hinges. Um, so in some cases I actually ended up cutting down the screw because I figured the big part is to make sure that that screw's getting a bite in the metal. Not that it's, you know, forcing the screw on the inside out of the way, but it was kind of a pain in the butt to get all those screws and I actually contacted Wham Bam to make sure that's what I was supposed to do. The biggest pain in the butt, however, is not on the concrete one, but on the fence posts that are in the ground because there's a, you know, the metal uh, post is actually running through the middle and some of these screws will go through this and then also through the metal post and then also the screw on the side is trying to come through the metal post at a different side and go through the screw as well. Uh, so I ended up knocking off a lot of the teeth on the, the self-tapping parts. Uh, it, it was a lot of headache. And when I contacted them and said, hey, is, is this really the way it should be going? They said, yeah, it's, it's great. You know, it actually gives it more stability because you're biting into the post. Whereas in my head, I was picturing that post on the inside looking a lot more like Swiss cheese. So...